Stuka Joe here, and today we'll be playing a game of Keep Up the Fire, the Boxer Rebellion, June to August 1900. And this is one of Victory Point Games States of Siege uh, games. And in this particular game, we will be uh, playing a group of nations, European nations, uh, also the Americans and the Japanese, who are trapped in the uh, international legation in Peking when the Boxer Rebellion erupts. And we will be defending the legation compound represented here in the map. If the Chinese occupy Fort Holiday, we lose. Or if they occupy three of the four street fighting spaces at once, we're also toast. Meanwhile, an eight nation army has been sent to our rescue and they start here in Taku, and they have to move through enemy country to finally reach Peking. And if our uh, forces in uh, Peking are still alive when the army arrives, we have a chance of winning. Now this game is driven by events that uh, happen here in a deck of cards. There are two epochs. Uh, you'll see the cards with a red uh, title first and then the yellow epoch. There are specific rules of how to prepare the deck. We won't cover that. Suffice to say, we place the draw pile here. Each of our eight countries' units have uh, special effects on the game. The Italians have a plus one favorable uh, to hit die roll modifier when firing at enemy units at extreme or long range. The French and the Americans are plus one on the to hit die roll at enemy units at long range. The Austro-Hungarians, British, and Germans increase uh, the amount of Chinese casualties by one in melee. Meanwhile, the Japanese decrease the legation casualties by one in melee, and the Russians are the only ones who have a negative uh, effect. They increase legation casualties by one in melee combat. These are the Chinese forces that will appear around the legation map, we have the boxers and king army units. The boxers have a particular effect. Whenever there is a casualty die roll, either to them or to our forces, one is added. Here's the legation compound map, and we place two units on each of the sides, west, south, east, and north. And no note that the wall uh, is important here. We only get a minus one to our casualties in the north and in the east wall. Meanwhile, in the west and in the south wall, the reduction is more significant, minus two to our casualties. So we set up our troops and we set up the Italians and Americans in the north, the Austro-Hungarians and Japanese on the east side, France and Germany south, and Britain and Russia to the west. During the game, Boxer and King Chinese forces will enter the legation map from the farthest space on each one of these tracks. This is the west track. We have here the southern track, the eastern track, and the northern track, and they all converge here at Fort Holiday. Now this is the relief column map at the beginning of the game. Our 8th nation army is placed here in the starting space of Taku. The army has a combat power and speed which is kept track here in these tracks. And uh, the game brings these markers, but we will not be using them because you can't see what's beneath them. We will use these semi-transparent chips that don't come with the game and we place them here in their zero starting spaces. At the beginning of the game, the Chinese will have two armies blocking our eighth nation army's way to Peking and attacking it. These are two boxer armies, one with a strength of three and another with a strength of four. And we have this cup, which is a randomizer cup, and each turn we draw one chit from that cup to see which is the Chinese blocking force. In the legation strength and heroic effort track, we keep track of the combat power of each of the nations. At the beginning, Japan starts with three. 
Austria, Hungary, Italy, and Germany, five, the United States, six, and Britain, Russia, and France, eight. And in addition, we keep track of heroic effort here. And uh, this serves to add victory points at the end of the game. For each point of heroic effort, we uh, receive five victory points at the end of the game. There's also a track of fortification points, and uh, these points absorb losses that would otherwise be inflicted on our units. So it is important to uh, always have these points around. Here we have the sequence of play. First, we flip a card from the deck. Next, the legation phase, where the action takes place on the legation map. The uh, Chinese place units on the map according to a uh, diagram on the card that was drawn. And then we have our action segment for the legation. We can increase the fortification level, make a fire attack at long or extreme range, or a melee attack at Chinese units on wall or street fighting spaces. Then the surviving Chinese units in the legation map advance normally one hex. Sometimes because of an event in the card, they can advance two hexes. And then we have our movement segment where we can rearrange legation units from one side of the uh, map to another. Then the action moves to the relief column map. We pick a Chinese unit from the randomizer cup and place it on top of our eight nation army. Then we check the card that applies for this turn and if it has a reading of a special blocking attack, that unit that we just placed on top of our army attacks our army. And then we conduct our commands, that is actions, with the uh, eight nation army. And that can be attacking the uh, Chinese blocking force, attempting to uh, advance, or increasing our speed or combat power. And finally, the housekeeping phase. If the eight nation army reaches Peking, the game ends. Otherwise, we take that Chinese blocking unit from the relief column map and place it back into the randomizer cup, and then we start all over again. So we begin the game with the card phase, and we draw the top card. And it reads, Empress Dowager Issues Edict in Support of Boxers. January 1900. Reversing previous rulings critical of the boxers, the Empress decides to support the boxers and encourage their efforts to eject all foreigners from China. And we have the legation diagram which indicates that there will be boxer forces coming in from the north, east, and south, all with a strength of four. And the card also indicates that we will have four actions during the legation actions phase, and there is a special activity. All these boxer units will advance two spaces instead of one space during their advance segment. So we place the initial boxer units on the map, and we also indicate their strength in each one of the tracks assigned to each one of the directions in which boxers or enemy units will be approaching. Now to the legation's action segment, and we have four actions. And our first action will be to conduct a fire attack with the Italians and Americans against the boxers coming from the north. The Italians, because of their special effect, add one to the two-hit die roll, and we have to uh, roll higher than the current strength of the boxer, so we have to roll a final die roll of five or six. In this game, our units can make fire attacks at Chinese units in the long-range and extra-long-range boxes. The advantage for us for those attacks is that the Chinese cannot cause any casualties on our forces. Now, once the Chinese are in the wall space or in a street fighting space, when we attack them, engage them in combat, it is a melee combat. And then we just roll a die to determine casualties on both sides. So it is important for us to try to uh, reduce the boxers or the Chinese before they get too close for comfort. 
So we roll 1d6 with a plus 1 modifier. The roll is a 3 modified to a 4, and that is a miss. We have 3 actions left, and we will attack again with our northern forces. So we roll 1d6. The result is a 4 modified to a 5, and now the boxers are hit. And now we roll one die to determine the casualties that the boxers will receive. And you will see always for casualty die rolls, we will use a red die. And the roll is a four, but there's some modifications here. The boxers are currently at an extreme range space, so casualties are reduced by one to three. But because the boxers have a special effect of plus one, as to casualties, their casualties, and their enemies' casualties, that is increased again to four. So the boxers suffer four casualty points, and that reduces their strength to zero, and that boxer unit is eliminated. And we still have two actions left. And we have boxers coming from the south and the east. The eastern wall is weaker. It only reduces our casualties by one. So the uh, Japanese and the Austrians will be firing on the boxers that are approaching that area. And we roll 1d6, and we obtain a 6. And uh, that's not modified, but it's higher than the uh, strength of those boxers, which is 4. So that's a hit. So now we roll a casualty die roll. But the roll is a 1, and uh, we subtract 1 because of the extreme range, that is 0, but we add 1 because of the boxer special effect. So the boxers lose 1 combat point, and they still have 3. We have 1 action left, and uh, we have to decide whether to fire at the boxers or use that action to increase our fortification level. And we will increase our fortification level by one, and that's the end of the legation actions segment. And now to the Chinese advance segment and the units, because of the uh, special uh, event in the card, advance two spaces. And both boxer units advance onto the walls. Now is the legation movement segment. We could rearrange our units and move them from one side of the legation to another one of those spaces there. But any of our units which have boxers in their wall spaces or street fighting spaces are engaged in combat. So uh, these four units of ours uh, cannot be moved, nor any of uh, these units into their spaces. So there's not going to be any legation movement. And now to the relief column phase, and we have two commands. But first we have to uh, draw one of the Chinese units from the cup and place the selected unit on top of our eight-nation army. So we draw one unit, and it is the four-strength boxer unit, and it is placed on top of our army. The blocking boxer unit will not attack because there is no such a reference in the card that is in play. So now we have our two commands. To defeat the blocking uh, boxer, we would have to roll higher than its combat rating of four. And uh, that is a one in three chance if we try to do now. And then with the second command, we would have to advance here. If we fail, our unit stays at Taku, and next turn we're going to have another boxer unit placed on top of us. And to advance here, it's even more difficult. We have to roll higher than 6, and we don't have any modification to that die roll because our speed is 0. So we have two commands, and what we will do is increase our strength uh, by uh, using both commands to move our marker two spaces to the right. And our strength is now plus 1. Now the housekeeping phase, we take the blocking boxer army and place it back in the randomizer cup, and that's the end of the first turn. Next card, and this is a special card, Pivot of Our Destiny. 
26 British, 15 Russians, and 15 Americans under the command of American Captain John T. Myers attacked the Chinese, killing about 20 of them and expelled the rest of them from the barricades. And this special card, we can retain it throughout the game and play it at any time during our action segment to drive back the Chinese unit on the track, which is defended by the U.S. legation unit, up to two spaces. So we retain this card and we can use it once for the effect that is listed there. Now we flip another card. Seymour repulsed at Pei Ho. 19 of June, 1900. After fierce fighting at the town of Pei Ho, only 25 kilometers from Peking, the relief column is forced to retreat with over 200 wounded in tow. Currently there are boxers in the south and in the east tracks, so there is a new boxer to be placed only here on the western track with a strength of five. And during this turn there will be a special activity. Colonel Shiba organizes Chinese volunteers and we gain one Japanese combat power point. Accordingly, Japanese strength increases from three to four. And we place a new boxer unit on the west track and it has a strength of five. And we have four actions. And of course, the biggest threat comes from the two boxer units that are already on wall spaces. So the French and Germans will conduct a melee attack against the boxer that is on the wall. We roll one die for casualties and a six. This is a bloodbath. First we determine boxer casualties. Six plus one for the boxer special effect is seven plus one for the German special effect that is eight and that is of course more than enough to uh, reduce that unit's uh, combat power to zero and that unit is eliminated. But now we have to determine our casualties. We start with a die roll of six plus the boxer special effect of one casualty point that is seven and from that number we subtract two for uh, the southern wall so it goes down to five and now we uh, can choose whether we want to burn one fortification point to reduce the total casualties to four and we will do so so the fortification level goes down to zero and now we have four casualty points that we have to distribute evenly between the French and the Germans so the Germans are reduced now to three and the French to six. We still have three actions and the next action will be the Japanese and Austro-Hungarians engaging in a melee attack against the boxers on the east wall. And we roll 1d6. The result is a five. So boxer casualties are five plus the boxer special effect of plus one, that is six and the Austrian special effect also increases that to seven and of course that is enough to wipe out the boxers that had a strength of three. But now we have to uh, distribute our casualties. We start with five plus one for the boxers that add uh, always to the casualty total that is six minus one because of the wall that's back to five and minus one because of the Japanese special effect so our casualties are four and we have to distribute them as evenly as possible so the Japanese strength goes down from four to two and the Austria-Hungarian strength is now reduced to three. We have two actions left and only one boxer unit at extreme range on the western track instead of uh, trying pot shots at that boxer unit, we will increase our fortification level by two, and that's the end of our actions segment. Now the Chinese advance segment and the boxer advances to the long range space. 
And now we proceed to the legation movement segment. That boxers in the long range space. That means that uh, we can take advantage, uh, move our French to the space where the Russians are and switch them, as well as the Americans, which we can switch for the British. And the French and the Americans have a plus one to hit die roll modifier at long range. So that will be a plus two. Uh, modifier and the hopes are that we can eliminate that boxer unit before we have to engage in uh, melee combat with the unit at the wall. So that's the end of the legation movement segment. Now to the relief column phase and we have a special activity. There will be a Chinese blockading force attack this turn with a die roll modifier of minus one. That is favorable to the Chinese because they have to roll uh, less than their combat strength to inflict a loss on our army. So we begin by selecting randomly a Chinese unit from the cup and it is again the uh, four strength boxer army. And now that army will conduct an attack and uh, it has to roll less than its strength to cause a loss on our army but there will be a die roll modifier of plus one on account of our army's combat power. So we roll 1d6. The result is a six modified to a seven, which is not lower than the boxer's army's combat factor. So that is no loss. Now we have two commands, and of course we won't attack that boxer unit because we have basically no chance of uh, dispersing it and moving into Xianxing with only two commands. So. We use both commands to increase our speed now to plus one. Now we do some housekeeping and that's the end of the turn. Next card, Empress declares war. 21st of June, 1900, the Empress Shu Xi declares war against all Western powers and pledges to free China from imperial domination and exploitation. And uh, currently there is one boxer unit here in the West Track. So we will place three King Army units in the Northeast and Southern Tracks. And there is a special situation. Imperial artillery reduces legation fortification level by one. So we place the newly arriving Chinese forces and note that the King Army units all have a strength of five except the Southern uh, Army unit that has a strength of six and we reduce our fortification level by one. And we have three actions. Our first action will be to conduct a long-range attack with the French and Americans against the boxer here and we have a plus two die roll modifier so we roll 1d6 and we have a five modified to a seven which is greater than the boxers uh, combat power so that is a hit now we roll one die to determine boxer casualties and we roll the six and that boxer unit is eliminated. So having just eliminated one boxer unit with one action, we still have two actions. The most powerful of the king units is the southern unit, it has a strength of six. So we will use uh, one of our actions to conduct a long or extra long range attack against the Eastern King unit. We roll 1d6. The roll is a 3 and that is not modified and that's a miss. We have uh, one action left and we will increase our fortification level uh, to level 2 and that's the end of our action segment. Now all Chinese forces advance one space. And all three are now at long range. And now we have the legation movement segment. We move the uh, French forces to where the Austrians are. And we will move the American 
forces south and exchange with the Russians. And that's the end of legation movement. Now to the relief column phase. And we have two commands, but there is a special situation. We conduct a Chinese blockading force attack this turn, and there is a diagram there of a mixed boxer and King Army unit, which is this one, which we now proceed to uh, add to the randomizer cup. So we place it there, and that is one of the possible armies that may uh, come about. So we draw one army from the cup and it is now the three strength boxer unit and because of the event in the card the uh, blockading boxer unit will attack our army and to be able to cause a loss the final die roll must be less than three but there is a plus one die roll modifier on account of our army's combat power so we roll 1d6 the result is a 1 modified to a 2, and it is lower than the boxer's strength, so that causes a loss on our army. And a loss is satisfied by reducing the speed or combat power marker by two boxes each, or one box both. And uh, we will reduce the speed by two boxes. Housekeeping phase, and we return the boxer unit to the randomizer cup, and that's the end of the turn. Next card. Foreign navies dispatch international force. 31st of May, 1900. At the request of the foreign embassies in Peking, 435 navy troops from eight countries are sent to the foreign legation compound to join in its defense. Currently, there are enemy forces north, east, and south. So, the only new ones that come in are from the west, a boxer unit with a strength of four. We place the unit and mark the strength. And we have three actions. The Americans and Germans attack the Southern King Army unit at long range and we have a plus one die roll modifier because of the american special effect we roll 1d6 and the roll is a six modified to a seven that's a hit now we roll for a king casualties the roll is a five and that reduces the strength of the king unit to one and we still have now two actions left the japanese and french attack the king unit at long range so we roll 1d6 and we get a five and we add one for the french special effect that is a six which is higher than the king army strength so that is a hit now we roll a die to determine king casualties the roll is a three so uh, the king army strength is reduced from five to two and we have one more action. The last action will be the Italians and British firing at the King unit at long range. And the Italian plus one at extreme range includes also uh, a plus one for long range. So we have a plus one die roll modifier. The roll is a five modified to a six and that's a hit on the King unit. So now we roll for casualties. And the King suffered three casualties so their strength is reduced to two and those are the three actions and none of the uh, king units were eliminated however they were substantially reduced so now is the chinese advance segment and all chinese units advance one space and now there are three king units in wall spaces six of our eight units are engaged with the king units in wall spaces so there will be no legation movement it's the relief column phase and there's a special activity a minus one die roll modifier to any uh, relief column attack that we perform and that uh, reduces the power of any attack that we make uh, anyway we're not going to make any attacks this turn and we have two commands we select a chinese unit from the cup and it is the mixed 
King Boxer Army with a strength of six. And now we have two commands. And we'll use both commands to increase our power to plus two. And that's the end of the relief column phase. Housekeeping, we place the Chinese unit back into the cup, and that's the end of the turn. Next card. Regional governors refuse to join rebellion. June 1900. Several regional governors, including Li Hongzhang and Zhang Shidong, refuse to lend men or supplies to the boxer forces fighting in Peking. And currently there are boxer and king army units on all four directions so no new units enemy units arrive this turn we have three actions but first a special activity civilian volunteers form carving knife brigade and we gain one combat power to any legation unit and we will increase japanese combat power to three we have three actions and three king army units on wall spaces. First, in the north, the Italians and British engage in melee combat against the king unit there. So we roll 1d6. The roll is a 3, but because of the British special effect, the casualties for the king are 4, and they only have 2, so that king unit is eliminated. Now we determine our casualties, starting with a die roll of 3, Minus one because of the north wall, it goes down to two. So we have to distribute two casualty points between the Italians and the British. We have two fortification points. We will use one to reduce the casualties to only one combat point. And we will select the British to absorb that combat loss. And now the British strength is seven. To our second of three actions and the... Japanese and French will engage in melee against the king units in the east wall. We roll 1d6 and we roll a 1. We determine the casualties for the king unit and uh, there is no modification and that unit only has two points left so it loses one and it is still alive. And now we determine our casualties and because that king unit is uh, on top of a wall space uh, with a minus one legation casualties we suffer no casualties so now we have one action left and we still have two king units on wall spaces and because the wall at the south is stronger we will use our last attack to attack the king units on the east wall so we roll 1d6 and the result is a six, another bloodbath. In terms of king casualties, the six is uh, enough to, of course, wipe out the king unit. But now we have to distribute six casualty points. We will reduce it by one by uh, using our sole fortification point. So it's down to five and... Uh, we reduce it by one point because of the Japanese special effect. Now it is four. And one more point is discounted because of the east wall. So the total casualty points are three. So the Japanese will be reduced by one. And their strength is two. And the French will be reduced by two. And their strength is now four. That's the end of the legation actions segment. And now the Chinese conduct their advance segment and the king unit in the southern wall moves into one of the street fighting spaces and the boxer unit in the west track moves onto the west wall. We have these four units engaged so the only units that can move are the other four and uh, we will switch the British with the French. And that is the end of legation movement. Now to the relief column phase. And there is a boxer unit that is to be removed. We remove the boxer army with a strength of three from the randomizer cup. 
this unit is removed and remaining in the cup is the boxer four strength unit and the combined six strength boxer uh, king unit we select the chinese blockading force and it is the boxer army with a strength of four we have now two commands and we will use both to uh, increase our speed to plus one and that is the end of the relief column phase housekeeping and we place the boxer army back into the cup that's the end of the turn next card another special card chinese sniper fire intense chinese sniper fire roared around the french legation and su wang fu the chinese constantly kept up the sniper barrage the foreigners were steadily and rapidly losing men killed by chinese snipers and this is a special event that we have to resolve immediately we lose one combat point from the legation unit with the most combat points or randomly from any of those that are tied for the most combat points and the one with the most combat points is the russian unit so it's now reduced to seven so we draw the next card and it reads the library at hanling yuan destroyed 24 of june 1900 the oldest and richest library in the world at hanlin yuan is burned but the yongle encyclopedia is saved the manchu blamed the british for the fire and there is a special activity we can spend two actions and one british combat power a point to save the Hanlin library and if we do so we advance the heroic effort marker and given the emergency situation that we have with a king unit in the street fighting box we will not engage in this uh, special action now currently there are Chinese forces in the west and in the southern track so we deploy new forces in the north and in the east tracks so we have four actions and there are Chinese units coming in from all sides including a very weak king unit with a strength of one in the street fighting box and we obviously have to attack it in melee combat to eliminate it but we have a special uh, card that we uh, drew a little while ago this card pivot of our destiny and this allows us to push back two spaces any chinese unit on a track defended by the u.s legation and we will use this card now and that will push back this king army unit two spaces back to long range and now we will start our four actions and the first action will be to fire with the Americans and Germans at long range against that king unit. So we roll 1d6 and we have a plus one die roll modifier. The roll is a three modified to a four, which is greater than the uh, king unit's strength factor. So that is a hit. And now we roll for casualties. And the roll is a one and one is just enough to eliminate the king unit. We have three actions left and uh, our second action will be for the Russians and Austrians to engage in melee against the boxers on the west wall. So we roll 1d6. The roll is a four. Boxer casualties start at four plus one for their special effect. That's five and plus one for the Austrian special effect. That's six. And that is enough to wipe the boxers out. But now to determine our casualties, we start at four and we add plus one because of the boxer's special effect, that is five. We add another plus one because of the Russian's uh, special effect, that is six. We subtract two because of the west wall, so our total casualties are four. We have no fortification points, so we have to reduce the Austrians by two levels and now they are at the minimum level 
of one and the Russians are now down to level five. We have uh, two actions left and the king are very far away and their strength is six. So it is practically impossible to cause any damage and it is very unlikely to cause damage on the boxers on the east track, which are also at extreme long range. So we will use our two remaining actions to obtain two fortification points. Now both Chinese units advance and they are both at long range. So now we have legation movement and we will place the British in the north and the French to the east. The Russians will also move to the north and the Italians will move to the east, place the Japanese on the west. And that's the end of our movement. Now to the relief column phase, and we have a special activity, a Chinese blockading force attack this turn, and we have two commands. We select the blockading force, and it is the mixed king boxer army with a strength of six. And now we'll conduct an attack, and it has to roll less than six, and we have a plus two on account of our combat power, so we roll 1d6. And luckily for us, the roll is a six modified to an eight, so there is no effect. Now we have two commands, and we will increase our strength now to plus three. And that's the end of the relief column phase, and we return the Chinese army to the random cup. That's the end of the turn. Next, miracle find at Shi Ku. 20th of June, 1900. Trapped and with supplies running low, the relief column finds a hidden King Arsenal at Shi Ku with a catch of weapons, ammunition, and medicine. We check the diagram and currently there are Chinese forces in the north as well as in the east. So there will be new boxer forces coming from the west and the south. And we have three actions. So we place the new boxer units. The first action is for the Italians and French to uh, make a fire attack against the boxers at long range on the east track. So we roll 1d6 and add plus 2. The roll is a 1 modified to a 3. That's not higher than the boxer's combat power, so that is a miss. We have two actions left, and we will again attack with the Italians and French, so we roll 1d6. This time the roll is a 3 plus 2, 5, and that's a hit. Now we roll for boxer casualties. The roll is a 5, and that eliminates the boxer unit. And now we only have one action left. And uh, the situation is that this powerful king unit with a strength of six will be moving on to the north wall. And uh, we will not be attacking that unit because uh, it is practically impossible to roll uh, a, a casualty die roll higher than its combat rating. So we will use our last action to increase fortification level to three. And now to the Chinese advance segment and all Chinese units advanced and we have the northern king unit on the wall. Now we perform uh, legation movement with those units of ours that are not engaged. So we switch the Germans here with the Italians and we also switch the French with the Austrians. Now to the relief column phase, there's a special activity, a Chinese blockading force attack with a die roll modifier of plus one, which is favorable to us because the blockading force has to roll lower than its uh, combat strength to inflict losses on our army. And we have three commands. We select the uh, Chinese blocking force and it is again the uh, mixed boxer king army with a strength of six. And that army now executes a blockading force attack. And it will roll 
one D six, and there is a plus one die roll modifier on account of the special activity in the card, and plus three for our uh, army's combat power for a total of plus four. So we roll one D six. And the roll is a one modified to a five, which is lower than the army's strength. So that is a loss on our force. And we will uh, cover our loss by reducing our strength to boxes and strength is now plus two. And housekeeping and we return the unit to the cup and that's the end of the turn. Next card and it is Fires, Ravage, Peking, and Consular Buildings. 23rd of June, 1900. In an effort to drive out the Western forces defending the legation compound, the boxers set fire to the buildings adjacent to the British sector. And uh, we have two special situations here. First, fires reduce legation fortification level by two. And that really hurts us because we were saving fortification points. Now, fortification levels are at one. Another special activity, eliminate a British combat point if available. So the British are now down to a strength of six. And we check the diagram. Currently, there are Chinese forces north, west, and south. So uh, no other forces come in. So we have three actions and there is a king unit, a very powerful one, with a strength of six in the northern wall. So our first action will be to uh, engage that king unit in melee combat. And we roll one d6 and the roll is a one. And uh, that die roll is increased by one because of the British special effect so the total king casualties are two so their strength is reduced to four now we inflict the casualties on our forces and we start with a one plus one for the russian effect that is a two and uh, because of the northern wall we reduce it by one so we have one casualty point and we reduce the russian strength now the four. Two actions left and we still have a fairly strong king unit on a wall. So the British and Russians attack the king unit in melee once again. We roll 1d6 and the result is a four which is increased to five because of the special British effect. So that king unit with four strength points is eliminated. Now we have to determine our casualties. We start with uh, the die roll of four, minus one for the northern wall. That goes down to three, and plus one because of the Russian special effect. It goes back up to four, and we will burn a fortification point, so it goes down to three casualty points. So we reduce the Russians by two, and their strength is now two. And we reduce the British one point to level five. We have one action left and we have boxers at long range in the south and in the west and they both have uh, strengths of four. Because the French and Japanese combined are weaker than the Italians and Americans, we will have the French and Japanese conduct a fire attack on the boxers in the western track. So we roll 1d6 and we have a plus 1. The roll is a 4 modified to a 5, which is greater than the boxer's strength, so that is a hit. And now we roll to determine boxer casualties. And the roll is a 5, which is increased by 1 because of the boxer's special effect, and that is 6, and that is more than enough to eliminate the boxer unit. And that is the end of the legation actions segment. There's only one boxer unit left to the south, and now we go to the Chinese advance segment. And the boxers advance on to the southern wall. 
And now the legation movement segment. And we have the Americans and Italians engaged with the boxer unit. So we will move the French north to switch with the Russians. And that's the end of legation movement. Now to the relief column phase. And uh, there will be no blockading force attack, but we have two commands. First, we select the blockading force, and it is the Boxer Army with a strength of four. Now we have two commands, and uh, we will use both commands to increase our speed to plus two. Housekeeping and the Boxer unit returns to the cup. That's the end of the turn. Next card. Foreigners and Christians driven from homes. June 1900. Anti-foreign riots erupt throughout Peking as foreign devil posters appear on walls. Those seen as a threat to China are found and killed. And there is a special action here uh, relating to the Peitang Cathedral defense table. This table offers us a chance to increase our heroic effort, but there's also a chance of uh, failing, nothing happening, and worse yet, we can lose two combat strength points. And uh, we saw that before, that has a chance of increasing our heroic effort marker and other possible effects, but we would have to spend two of our precious three actions to roll on that table, and we will not do so. Now, pr presently, there are boxers in the southern track, so new boxer units with strengths of five appear west and east. And we have three actions. And since we have a boxer unit on the southern wall, the first action will be a melee attack by the Americans and Italians. So we roll 1d6. And the result is a six, a bloodbath. Boxer casualties start at six, plus one for their special effects, seven. And uh, that is more than enough to reduce their combat power to zero, and they are eliminated. Now we have to assess our casualties. We start with six, plus one for the effect of the boxer unit, that is seven minus two for the wall so it goes down to five and there is no other modification so we have to assess a loss of five between the americans and the italians so the italians will lose two and their strength goes down to three the americans lose three and they also have now a strength of three we have two actions left, and the uh, boxer units that remain are at extreme long range, and we don't have any uh, long range units, uh, I mean units of ours with bonuses for firing at extreme long range on those tracks. So we will use the remaining two actions to increase our fortification level to level two. Now to the Chinese advance segment, and both boxer units advance along their tracks, and they are now at long range. And now to legation movement, and the Italians will trade places with the Austrians, as well as the Americans with the Germans. Meanwhile, the French will trade spaces with the Russians. And that is the end of legation movement. Now to the relief column phase, and we have a special activity, a Chinese blockading force attack this turn, and we have two commands. So we select the blockading Chinese army, and that is the boxer army with a strength of four. And it will conduct a blockading attack to cause a loss in our force. It has to roll less than four, and there is a plus two modifier for our combat power, so we roll 1d6. The roll is a 6 modified to an 8, and that is no effect. Now we could use our first command to uh, disperse the box unit, and the second one to try to advance. It is a little risky, and uh, we would have better chances next time, but maybe next time we will have the 6 strength boxer unit. So, 
we will attempt to do that right now. So our first uh, command will be to attack the boxers. And we have a plus two, and we have to roll a final die roll modifier, a final die roll, I may say, of more than four. The roll is a two, modified to a four, so there is no effect on the boxer unit. So the second command will be used to increase our strength by one box. And that is the end of the relief column phase. We uh, put the boxer back in the cup, and that's the end of the turn. And next card, relief column attacked. 18 of June, 1900. En route to Peking, the relief column under Seymour is attacked and stopped. Ominously, Chinese imperial troops are discovered among the attackers. And there's a special activity. If we spend two of our four actions, we can roll on the Peitang Cathedral defense table. And the present situation is that we have boxers coming from the west and the east at long range. So because we have already boxers west and east, we only have one new boxer unit coming from the north with a strength of four. So we place the new boxer unit in the north. And now we check the special activity on the card. We have the option of spending two of our four actions to roll on the Peitang Cathedral defense table. So we will not roll on the Peitang Cathedral defense table. We will use all our four actions to fend off the boxers that are coming uh, and approaching our legation compound. The uh, east and west boxers have a strength of five, so uh, we'll try to take care of them first. The Germans and Italians will fire at this boxer here in the uh, long range box. And we have a plus one because of the Italians' special effect. So we roll 1d6. And we start off with a six, plus one is seven. That is a hit. So now we will roll to see casualties on the boxers. We roll 1d6. The roll is a 3 modified because of the boxer uh, special effect to a 4. So uh, the boxers now have only one strength point. We now have three actions left. The next action will be the Japanese and Russians firing at the boxer uh, unit that is on the long range table on the west track. And we do not have any uh, die roll modifier. So we roll 1d6. The result is a four, not higher than the boxer's strength, so that is a miss. We have two more actions. The next action will attempt to eliminate the uh, boxers on the east track. They only have a strength of one, so uh, we fire with the Italians and Germans, and we have a plus one to our to hit die roll. We roll 1d6. The roll is a one, but because of the Italian special effect of uh, plus one, the uh, final result is a two, and that is a hit. So now we roll to determine boxer casualties. Three modified to a four because of the boxer special effect, and that is, of course, enough to uh, wipe the boxers out. And now we have one action left. Seems it's going to be hard to uh, eliminate this unit with one action left. So we will use the remaining action to increase our fortification level to three. And that's the end of the legation actions segment. Now to the Chinese advance segment and both boxer units advance. And we have boxers on our west wall. And now it's our legation movement segment. The Italians will go to the north and we switch with, with the British. And furthermore, we switch the Austrians with the British, and the British go to the south with the Americans. That's the end of our movement segment. To the relief column phase, and there is a special activity, a Chinese blockading force attack this turn, and in addition, there is a new Chinese unit that enters play, and that is a mixed king boxer unit with a strength of five and we place this unit in the randomizer cup. 
select the Chinese army and it is the boxer army with a strength of four and now that unit executes a blocking force attack and it needs a final die roll less than four to cause some loss on our army and there is a plus two die roll modifier on account of our army's combat power so we roll 1d6 a three modified to a five so the boxers fail in causing any damage now we have two commands and it is tempting to uh, try to attack that boxer army and disperse it and, and then try to advance but with only two commands and the modifiers that we have chances are not uh, good yet so we will use both commands to increase our combat power by two spaces and now it is plus three housekeeping phase and we return the boxer unit to the cup and that's the end of the turn next card German envoy Kettler murdered in Peking 20th of June 1900 asserting there was nothing to fear from the Chinese German envoy Clemens Friedrich von Kettler and his guards are attacked and killed and uh, there is a special activity all boxer units advance two spaces this turn instead of one and uh, right now there are enemies or boxers on the west and in the north track so there will be a new boxer unit starting in the east track with a strength of four and with a movement of two this turn for the boxers if we do not destroy this uh, boxer unit on the wall they will advance into Fort Holiday and, and the game will be over and this uh, boxer unit in the north may advance up to two spaces here to the street fighting box so this turn is critical and we have three actions but first there's another special activity we have to eliminate a German combat point so German combat power is now reduced to two and we have three actions and of course the first action is pretty obvious the Japanese and Russians will engage in melee combat against the boxers on the west wall and we roll for casualties and the roll is a four boxer casualties are four plus one for their special effect that is five and five it's is all they have so the boxers are eliminated now we have to determine our casualties we start with four plus one for the eliminated boxer that has a special effect of uh, plus one so uh, that is five and then we have minus two because of the wall that's three minus one because of the Japanese special effect now it's two and plus one because of the Russian special effect so it is three casualty points we will use one of our fortification points and there is now two casualty points that must be satisfied one taken from the Japanese and another from the Russians so the Japanese as well as the Russians combat power is reduced to one our second of three actions will be the French and Italians firing at the boxer in the long range box in the north track and we have a die roll modifier of plus two and we need a final die roll of five or more to hit so we roll 1d6 a one modified to a three and that is a miss and we have one action left and as we stated before if we do not eliminate that boxer uh, that unit will move two spaces into the street fighting box and that is not good so we will use our last action to fire again the French and the Italians against the northern boxers so we have a plus two and we roll 1d6 this time the roll is a five modified to a seven and that's a hit now we roll for boxer casualties the roll is a two modified with a plus one for the boxers special effect to a three so we deduct three combat points and those boxers are still alive with a strength of one and that is the end of the uh, legation phase now we proceed 
to the Chinese advance segment. And there are two boxer units that will be advancing, and they will advance two spaces. And now there are boxers on the streets here, in the street fighting box, and a boxer on the eastern wall. And now to the legation movement segment. Four of our units are engaged in combat with those boxers. They cannot move, and uh, we will not be moving any of the other units, so that's the end of the legation phase. Now to the relief column phase. Uh, there will be no Chinese blocking force attacks, and we have two commands. So we pick a Chinese unit, and it is the four-strength unit, and... Uh, now we have two commands. Do we attempt to advance? Now, uh, it is worrisome that we only have a speed of plus two because to be able to advance, we have to roll higher than six. So uh, we will not advance. And what we will do is use our two commands to increase our speed to plus three. So now we... Uh, conduct the housekeeping phase, and the Chinese army goes back into the cup, and that's the end of the turn. Next card, International Marine Force Marches on Peking. 10th of June, 1900, 2,000 Marines under British Vice Admiral Edward Seymour decide to advance on foot from Tianjin to Peking after the rail line is cut. We check the diagram. Currently there are enemies in the north and eastern tracks, so we place new boxer units in the west and southern tracks. And we have three actions. And we have a boxer unit with a strength of one in the street fighting box, which has to be eliminated in order to not lose the game this turn. So the first action is a melee attack by the French and the Italians against the boxer unit here. And there is a modifier to casualties of plus one because of the street fighting box. So we roll 1d6 for casualties. And fortunately, the number is not uh, a very high number, but enough to eliminate the boxers. We roll a two plus one for the boxer special effect that is three plus one for the space, the street fighting box. That's four. Of course, that's more than enough to eliminate these boxers that have a strength of one. So now we inflict the uh, casualties on our forces. We start with the two, die roll of two plus the space here, plus one, three plus the boxers special effect of plus one. That is four. And... Uh, Right now, the uh, Italians have a strength of three and the French of four, but we have uh, two fortification points, and we will use both of them to reduce our casualties now to two. And we apply one to the Italians, and their combat power goes down to two, and one to the French, and their combat power is now three. Still have two actions left. Our next action, the Austrians and Germans will engage in melee against the boxers on the east wall, which have a strength of four. So we roll for casualties. The roll is a four for the boxers. We start with four plus one, five, plus one for the Austrians and another for the Germans. That's six casualty points. They have four. So uh, they are eliminated. And now to our casualties, we start with four plus one for the special effect of the boxer unit, that is five, minus one because of the wall, that is four, and we have no fortification points, so we have to split the four losses between the two countries' forces. So we have to inflict two on the Austrians. They only have one, so they absorb one, and now the Germans must absorb the loss that the Austrians did not absorb, so they have to... Uh, uh, receive three uh, combat factors in loss. They don't have uh, that strength, so they are also reduced to zero, and both forces are eliminated. The Austrians and Germans are eliminated from play. 
we have one action left and there are two boxer units at extreme long range so we will use the last action to uh, build one fortification point and that's the end of the legation action segment now the chinese forces advance and both boxer forces are now at long range and now to the legation movement segment the french will take the place of the russians on the west side meanwhile the japanese will go to the east side and the italians also are placed on the west side now to the relief column phase and we have a special activity a plus one diral modifier to attacks and advances by the relief column this turn so this is now a good time to uh, attack Chinese units and uh, try to advance to uh, Tianjin, and we have three commands. So let's hope we draw a weak Chinese unit, and it is uh, well, the strongest one in the cup, which is the mixed boxer king army with a strength of six. So if we try to attack it, we have a 50-50 chance. We have to roll four or more. And the problem is that when you attack a blocking force and uh, we roll less than the uh, result there, than the six in this case, we suffer one loss. And uh, that will, of course, uh, throw a wrench in our timetable. So we will use our three commands to increase our strength. And it is now plus four. And that's the end of this phase. And we place the blocking Chinese army back into the cup. And that's the end of the turn. Next card. And it is a special card, Redeployment Under Fire. It was a claustrophobic existence for the soldiers on the wall. The men all feel they are in a trap, said the American commander, Captain John T. Myers and simply await the hour of execution. And we can retain this card and play it at any time in our action segment, and this adds one combat point to any legation unit, and we would have to subtract one combat point for any other legation unit. So we retain this card and we flip the next card. And it is a yellow Epoch, card, international, gun, assembled. And that name, international, gun, it is pretty uh, peculiar, isn't it? It is like uh, grandiose. And where have I heard another grandiose name for a weapon? Uh, let me see if I can remember. Yes, the holy hand grenade of Antioch, but that does not come with this game. Uh, we could make good use of it but we have the international gun instead. But the first thing we will do is play the card that we just received a moment ago, redeployment under fire, and we can increase the combat power of any legation unit in exchange for reducing the combat power of another. So we will reduce the British strength by one to four and increase the German strength from zero to one, and that means we can return the German unit to the legation map. And we will place the Germans on the east side of the compound together with the Japanese. And we have a special activity. We receive the international gun. July 1900, improvised by using a British barrel, an Italian carriage, Russian shells, and a US crew the international gun works miracles in the legation's defense. And here is the international gun. It has a plus one in all two hit die rolls and a plus three uh, for Chinese casualties. And we will put the gun to good use immediately and place the gun in a space uh, which is dedicated to the gun here in the southern side of the legation compound. Currently, there are Chinese units west and south, so we will place two new units, each with a strength of five, in the north and in the east tracks. So we have uh, enemies from all directions, and we have three actions. And we start with our units in the southern uh, part of the compound, 
and we have the Americans, the British, and the international gun firing at this boxer unit at long range. So we have a plus two on account of the American special effect and the international gun special effect to the to hit die roll. So we roll 1d6. The roll is a five modified to a seven, and that's a hit. And now we roll for casualties. The roll is a two modified to a three because of the boxer's special effect and modified uh, with a plus three to a six because of the international gun special effect on Chinese casualties. And six combat factors of loss is enough to eliminate those boxers. Two actions left. Now the French and the Italians will fire at these boxers at long range, and we have a plus two for the effect of each of those uh, countries' forces. So we roll 1d6, a one modified to a three, and that is a miss. So we have one action left, and the other boxers are at, at extreme long range. That is, the boxers in the north and in the east. So again, we will have the French and the Italians firing at the uh, Western boxers, and we have a plus two. Another one, and it is modified to a three, still a miss. And that's the end of the legation's action segment. And now all boxer units advance. And we have boxers now on the Western wall. And now, the legation movement segment. And we can redeploy our forces, including the international gun. And we move the international gun to the northern part of the compound, and the Americans switch with the Japanese, and the British switch with the Germans. And that's the end of the legation phase. Now to the relief column phase, and we have two commands, but there is a new Chinese unit that enters the game. And this is a seven strength King Army unit, and we place it in the randomizer cup. So now we select the Chinese unit as a blocking force, and it is the mixed King Boxer Army with a strength of five, and we have two commands. And we will attempt to uh, disperse the Chinese and advance. If we have two commands, the first command is used to attack the Chinese blocking force, and we need a final die roll of six or more. We have a plus four modifier, so we only need a two or more. We roll 1d6. The roll is a three modified to a seven, and the uh, Chinese army is dispersed. And now, our army will attempt to advance into Sien Sing, and we need a final die roll modifier of seven or more. And we have a plus three modifier, so we actually need four or more to advance. So we roll 1d6, and the roll is a five. So our eight nation army advances on Sien Sing, and now we conduct housekeeping. The uh, Chinese army goes back into the randomizer cup, and that's the end of the turn. We are barely commencing the second epoch of this game with the yellow cards, and this is the situation in the legation compound. The Russians, Germans, and Japanese each have one combat point. The Italians have two. The French and Americans have three, and the British are the strongest uh, force there with four combat points. And now we proceed to the next card, and it is a special card. Once more, on to the breach. The most desperate fighting took place near the French legation, where 78 French and Austrians and 17 volunteers were under assault in convoluted urban terrain, where the opposing lines were only 50 feet apart. And we can retain this card and play it after any melee attack is resolved to remove the Chinese unit involved in melee from the map at a cost of one casualty point to any legation unit. So we will keep this card 
and we will flip and consult the next one. So we flip the next card. Emerson Liscombe earns 9th Infantry Motto, August of 1900. In action near Cien Colonel Emerson Liscombe of the U.S. 9th Infantry Regiment is killed while defending his men, yelling, Keep up the fire! And there's a special activity here, a possible roll on the Peitang Cathedral defense table. We will not roll on that table at this time. And there's another special uh, development here. We receive the Keep Up the Fire marker. And here is the marker, and we can spend it for one reroll or save it for one heroic effort. For now, we're going to keep it to the side. And currently, there are Chinese forces north, east, and west. So we add a King Army unit with a strength of five to the southern track. So with units on all tracks in all directions, we have four actions. And there is a Boxer unit with a strength of four on the western wall. And our first action is a melee attack by the French and Italians against this Boxer unit. We roll 1d6 for casualties. The roll is a 4. Chinese casualties are 4 plus 1, that is 5. And that is enough to eliminate the boxers on the wall. And now we determine our casualties. It is 4 because of the die roll plus the effect of the eliminated boxers plus 1. 5 minus 2, 3. And we will use our remaining fortification point to reduce casualties to two. And we have to split the casualties between the forces so the Italians suffer casualties and their level is now one and the French level is reduced to two. Our second of four actions, we will fire the Russians and the international gun against the boxers on the northern track. And we have a plus one die roll modifier because of the international gun's effect. So we roll 1d6. Three plus one, four, and that is a miss. And we use our third action to repeat the same attack. We roll 1d6. A one modified to a two, another miss. And we only have one action left. And we'll use it to attack again with the Russians and the international gun. So we roll 1d6. 3 plus 1, 4, still a miss. And that's the end of the legation's actions. And now the Chinese forces advance. And there are now two boxer forces on wall spaces. And this is not getting pretty. And now we have legation movement. And the French will switch with the Japanese, as well as the Italians with the Germans, and the Germans will be sent to the north. To the relief column phase, there will not be any uh, Chinese blocking force attack in this turn, but we only have two commands. So we draw the Chinese blocking unit, and it is the four strength boxer army, and we have two commands. And the advance will practically be automatic with that plus four, so we will uh, attack that boxer unit and attempt to advance. So our first command is to attack the boxers and we have a plus four. So we roll 1d6, a four modified to an eight and the boxers are dispersed. Now we have our second command to attempt to advance now into Peizang and Peizang is what is called a danger zone. If we uh, suffer losses in Pei Sang, they will be double uh, the effect. So uh, it's a place we don't want to hang out there for a long time. So we will attempt to advance into Pei Sang. We have a plus three, which means that uh, we have to roll a four or more. So we roll one D6. And we rolled a two plus three modified to a five. And it is lower than six, so we suffer one loss. And we will lower the combat strength by two boxes, so it's now plus three. 
but we will remain in Sien Sing. Now to the housekeeping phase and we return the boxer unit to the cup and that's the end of the turn. Next card, and there are about 12 cards left. Tartar Wall Falls. 12 of August, 1900. The Eight Nation Army reaches Peking and elements of the US 14th scale the legation wall as British troops enter the outer compound. There are currently Chinese units north, east, and south, so a new Chinese army with a strength of five appears in the west side. And we have three actions and currently two boxer units in wall spaces. And both boxer units are strong, each with a strength of four. We start our first action. The British and Americans engage in melee against the boxers on the east wall. We roll 1d6 for casualties. And boxer casualties start at 3 plus 1 for the boxer unit, 4 plus 1 for the British special effect, 5. And 5 is what that boxer unit had, so it is eliminated. Now we assess our casualties. We start at 3 plus the boxer unit 4 minus 1 for the east wall and it goes down to 3 and we have no fortification uh, points so we have to uh, inflict 3 casualties on our forces. We reduce the Americans by 1 and they're down to 2 and the British by 2 and they're also now at 2. Two actions left, and next the Russians and Germans engage in melee against the boxers on the north wall, and the international gun has no effect in uh, that space. So, we roll 1d6 for casualties. The roll is a 1, we add 1 for the boxers, that is 2, another 1 for the uh, German special effect, 3, so the boxers suffer 3 casualty points, and their strength is now at two. Now we assess our casualties. We start with one plus one for the boxer unit, that is two, minus one for the wall, that is one, and plus one for the Russian special effect, and that is two. So each uh, country, Germany and Russia, has to suffer one, and Germany only has one, so it goes down to zero, as well as Russia. And now, we remove the units for both countries. And now we only have five uh, countries, or units for five countries, on the legation map. We have one action left, and the French and Italians will fire at the king army, uh, king unit here, at long range. And we have a plus two die roll modifier, so we roll 1d6. A 4 modified to a 6, and that's a hit. Now we roll for king casualties. And good fortune, a 6. And uh, that is enough to eliminate the king army unit. And now to the Chinese advance segment. There are only two Chinese forces, one west and one north, and they now advance. And the northern boxer unit is in the street fighting space. If it advances next turn, we will lose the game, and it still has a strength of two. And now to the legation movement phase, and we will send the British to the north there, and also the Japanese. Meanwhile, we'll place the French on the west side. And that is the end of the legation actions segment. Relief column phase. And there is a special uh, situation, a plus one die roll modifier for relief column attack and advanced die rolls this turn. And we have two commands. So we select the Chinese unit and it is the most powerful king army, the seventh strength unit. And uh, we have two commands. We will not take a chance there. So we will advance our marker on the combat power track by two. So we now have a strength of plus four. And uh, we do housekeeping and return the king unit to the cup. 
Next card. Eight Nation Force begins march on Peking. 4th of August, 1900. 20,000 Allied troops set out from Tianjin to relieve the Peking legation. They were outnumbered along the way by 70,000 Imperial troops and 100,000 boxers. And there is a special activity. Imperial artillery reduces uh, our fortification level by one, but it is at level zero, so that has no effect. And there are Chinese uh, forces on the western track as well as on the northern track. And uh, there's a new one then that we will place a king unit on the southern track. And the new unit has a strength of five. We have four actions and uh, we have to eliminate that boxer unit in the street fighting box in the north track. So we will start right there. A melee attack by the Japanese and British. We roll 1d6. And the casualty die roll is a 1. Now we determine casualties for the boxers. 1 plus 1 for their uh, special effect. That is 2. And there would be another one for street fighting 3. And another one for the British 4. And they only have a strength of 2. So uh, they are eliminated. But now we determine our casualties. We start with 1 for the die roll. Plus 1 for the boxer effect. Plus 1 for the... Uh, street fighting uh, space that is now three uh, the Japanese effect uh, reduces it by one and it is two casualty points we have to split the loss the Japanese take one casualty point and they are now eliminated and the British are reduced to one so we eliminate the Japanese unit and we have three actions left our second action, the French will fire at long range against the King unit, and we have a plus one die roll modifier. We roll 1d6. Four plus one, five, and it's not uh, greater than its strength, so that's a miss. Two actions left, and we will fire again with the French. We roll 1d6 with a plus one. Three plus one, four, another miss. One action, and we will roll with the French once again with a plus one. We, die, we roll 1d6, a three modified to a four, and they miss again, and that's the end of our actions. Now it's the Chinese advance phase, and the West and Southern Chinese units advance, and we have a five-strength king unit on the west wall. And now the legation movement segment. And we move the international gun to the southern side and the uh, Italians take a position on the east side. And that's it. Now to the relief column phase, and we have two commands, but there's a special activity. Again, a plus one to a relief column attack and advanced die rolls this turn. Let's see if we draw one of the weaker Chinese units. And yes, this is the weakest one in the cup. The boxer army with a strength of four, and we have two commands, and we will attempt to uh, disperse it and advance. So. We uh, roll 1d6 and we add plus 4 and we have to score higher than 4. We roll 1d6. The roll is a 3 and we add 4. It is 7. And that is higher, obviously, than the strength of the boxer unit. So it is dispersed. And now we will attempt to advance into Pei Zhang. And uh, we will roll 1d6 and we have to roll a modified 7 or more. And we have a plus three, so we roll one d6. And the roll is a one, plus three, four. And uh, we have the table here says, if less than six logistics problem, we suffer one loss. So we, uh, again, will reduce our speed by two boxes. 
housekeeping and that's the end of the turn and this is becoming very agonizing Taiyuan Massacre July 1900 the Taiyuan Massacre kills hundreds of Chinese Eastern Orthodox Christians Protestant missionaries and Protestant Chinese have a special activity, our fortification level is reduced by one because of imperial artillery attacks, but we don't have any fortification points, so that is ignored. Currently, there are Chinese forces in the west and southern tracks, so a new King Army unit with a strength of five appears north, and a Boxer unit with a strength of four appears east. And once again, we have Chinese forces coming in from all directions, and we have four actions. And the first action will be the French engaging in melee combat against the King unit on the wall. So uh, we roll 1d6. The result is a 2, and it is uh, not modified. So the King unit is reduced to 3, and now we uh, assess our casualties two and uh, there's a minus two for the west wall so the French are intact and now we play this card once more onto the breach and uh, we play after a melee attack has been resolved and we remove the Chinese unit at the cost of one casualty point to any legation unit so the king unit is eliminated and now we have to reduce by one, one of our units. We will reduce the French that have two combat factors and now they are at one. Second action will be the international gun attacking uh, the king unit at long range. So we roll one d6. A six modified to a seven and that's a hit. And now we roll to determine king casualties. The roll is a three, but we add three because of the special effect of the international gun. So that is six, and that wipes out the king unit. Two actions left, and there are two enemy units at an extreme long range. What we will do is we will uh, use our actions to pick up two fortification points. And now both Chinese units advance. And they are now both at long range. And now to the legation movement phase and the international gun is placed in the northern side. And the British will cover the south. Now to the relief column phase, there's a special activity, a Chinese blockading force attack with a minus one die roll modifier. And that is beneficial for the Chinese. Select the blockading force, and it is the boxer unit with a strength of four, which conducts a blocking attack with a minus one because of the special activity, but a plus four for our combat power. We roll one d6. Three minus one, two plus four, six, and the boxer's attack has no effect now we have two commands and we will be attacking the boxers and uh, we have a plus four so uh, we roll 1d6 six plus four ten which is greater than the boxer's strength so the boxers are dispersed and now we will attempt to advance and we need a final die roll of seven or more so that means we have to roll a five or a six so we roll one d6 and we have a plus two for our speed the roll is a five plus two seven and our eight nation army advances into Peisang, which is a danger zone so now we do housekeeping and that's the end of the turn there's nine cards left and five spaces uh, to reach Peking, so uh, this is really a very uphill struggle. We go to the next card. Siege at Peking nears end. 15th of August, 1900. U.S. Captain Riley's Battery F smashes the boxer barricades blocking the inner legation compound. The capture of the city begins and the siege of Peking ends. 
And there's a special activity, all boxer units advance two spaces. And uh, currently we have uh, enemies in the north and in the east. So we add a king unit with a strength of five on the western track. So we place a new unit. Three enemies, two at long range, and one of them is a boxer that will move two spaces. So we have four actions. The first action will be the Italians and the Americans firing at the boxer. And we have a plus two die roll modifier. We roll 1d6. And the roll is a six modified to an eight. That's a hit. Now we roll for boxer casualties. And we were very lucky again. A six modified to a seven. And uh, the boxers are eliminated. In our second action, the international gun will fire against the king unit at long range. We have a plus one die roll modifier to the to hit die roll. We roll one d6. The roll is a four modified to a five, and that's a miss. Now to our third action, and we will fire the international gun once again. We roll one d6. The roll is a two modified to a three, and that is also a miss. We have uh, one last action. And we will roll again with the international gun with a plus one die roll modifier. We roll 1d6. This time the roll is a five modified to a six, and that's a hit. Now we roll for king casualties. The roll is a five, and five combat points it's, is what the king unit had, so it is eliminated. And that's the end of our four actions. And... Uh, I realized that I should have put that French unit together with the international gun. But luckily we were able to fend off uh, the most dangerous attackers. There's only now one king unit at extreme long range. Now to the Chinese advance segment. And the king unit on the western track advances into long range. And now we proceed to legation movement. And we will move the Americans to the west side and also the international gun. Now to the relief column phase, there will be a special activity, a Chinese blockading force attack with a minus one die roll modifier, which uh, favors the Chinese. And we have three commands. So we select the Chinese unit. And it is the Mixed King Boxer Army with a strength of six. Now it will execute a blocking force attack, and it has to roll less than six. But we have a plus four die roll modifier because of our army's combat power. We roll 1d6, a four modified to an eight, and the Chinese attack fails. And uh, we were lucky that that failed because uh, if we would have suffered a loss, it would have been double because we are in a danger zone. Now, if we attempt to advance, we have to roll a three or higher, and there's a big chance that we fail doing so. We will, believe it or not, use our three points to increase our speed. We use two for uh, reaching the plus three speed mark and one to get closer to that plus five combat power. That's the end of the relief column phase and we place the Chinese army back into the cup. Next card, eight nation force assembled. July 1900, over several weeks, 55,000 troops from eight nations assemble at Taku to begin a renewed drive to Peking to relieve the legation siege. And currently there's only a one enemy unit on the western track. So there will be new boxer forces from the north and the east. And the special activity is that the boxers will advance two spaces during their advance segment. So we place the new forces. And we have four actions. In the first action, the French and Americans and the international gunfire upon the king unit at long range and we have a plus three to our to hit die roll we roll 1d6 
The roll is a five modified to an eight. That's a hit, and now we roll for king casualties. The roll is a three, and we add three more because of the international gun. That is six, and that eliminates the king unit. Now we have three actions left, and there are two boxer units left, and these boxers will advance two spaces in the advance phase. The weaker of the two is the boxer unit to the south with a strength of four, so we'll take a shot even though we don't have any uh, to hit positive die roll modifier. We'll take uh, an action to try to see if we can hit that boxer unit. So we attack with the British and we roll 1d6. The result is a two and that's a miss. We have two actions left and uh, we will again attack with the uh, Southern Defenders, the British, without any positive die roll modifier against the Boxer unit. So we roll 1d6. The result is a four, another miss. One action left. We could increase our fortification level to three, but uh, in any event, we will have, even if we destroy the southern boxers, the northern boxers will move onto the wall. So we will roll again uh, against the southern boxers. And we roll 1d6. And no luck, a 4. That's another miss. So that's the end of the legation action segment. Now to the Chinese advance segment. And the boxers move two spaces and they fall upon the northern and southern walls. And now to the uh, legation movement segment, the Americans are placed in the north as well as the Italians and the French are placed south. Now the relief column phase and we have three commands. We pick the blocking Chinese unit and it is again the six strength mixed boxer king army unit we have three commands and the way things are going at the legation there is no more time for waiting and uh, building up our strength so we will attack the uh, chinese army we need a final die roll of seven and we have a plus four so we roll 1d6 the roll is a three modified to a seven and the uh, chinese unit is dispersed and now we can attempt to advance into Yang Sung. And we need a final die roll of seven or, or more. And there is a plus three. So we roll 1d6. But the roll is a two modified to a five. So we do not advance. And even worse, we suffer one loss. So we reduce our strength by two boxes. It is still at plus four. Housekeeping, we place the Chinese unit in the cup. That's the end of the turn. Next card. And we have a special card. The Allied troops are almost here. On August 14, the defenders heard from the east the sound of a machine gun, a sign that the rescue army was on the way. At 5 a.m. came the sound of artillery outside the walls of Peking. Relief had finally arrived. And this is a card that we resolve immediately. And for the rest of the game, on a melee roll of five or six, we subtract two casualties for the legations. So we place the card here by the side to denote that it is in effect throughout the game. And we flip the next card. First Relief Convoy Saved. 26th of June 1900, a Russian force from Port Arthur, along with British sailors, manages to break through to the beleaguered Seymour convoy and evacuate them to safety. And we have a special situation here. Custom House employees form civilian volunteers gain one combat point to any legation unit. So we will bring back the Japanese legation unit which now has a strength of one, and we will now place the Japanese unit on the map. And we place the Japanese here on the east side. Presently, there are boxers 
in the north and south track. So there are new units, two King Army units with strengths of six on the east and western tracks. So we place the new units. And uh, we have uh, boxer units in wall spaces. And our first action is uh, to engage in melee with the British and the French against the boxers on the southern wall. So we roll for casualties, 1d6. The roll is a 2. Boxer casualties are increased by 1 because of their own uh, special effect. So the boxers suffer 3 casualties and they're down now to 1. Now we assess our casualties and we start with 2 plus 1 for the boxer unit, that is 3, minus 2 because of the south wall, that is 1. And what we will do is that we will use one of our fortification points and we reduce the fortification level to 1 and we suffer no losses. And now we have three actions and two boxer units in wall spaces. Our second action will be to attack the boxers on the north wall with the Americans and Italians. So we roll for casualties. The roll is a one. Boxer casualties are one for the die roll, one for the boxer special effect, and that is two casualty points. They still have three. Now we assess our casualties. We start with one for the die, one for the boxer special effect, minus one because of the wall, that is back to one, and we'll burn our last fortification point, and we suffer no casualties. So with one action left, we have boxers on the north wall with a strength of three, and boxers with a strength of one on the southern wall. So we will go after the ones in the northern wall. And we roll 1d6 for casualties. And another one. Boxer casualties are 1 for the die roll plus 1 for the boxer special effect. That is 2. And the boxers are still alive with a strength of 1. Our casualties are 1 for the die roll, 1 for the boxer special effect minus 1 because of the north wall. And uh, so we're down to one, and we have no fortification points. So it's one casualty point. And we reduce the Americans from two down to one, and all of our legation units have a strength now of one. And now all Chinese units advance one space. And now we have two boxer units in street fighting boxes. Now to the legation movement phase. And the only unit that could move is the Japanese unit. And uh, it would make no difference to move it to the west side. So we will leave it there. And that's the end of the legation phase. Now to the relief column phase, there's a special activity, a Chinese blockading force attack. So we pick a Chinese blockading unit, and it is the four strength boxer unit. And it will conduct a blockading force attack and it needs to roll a modified result of less than four, and we have a plus four for our combat strength. So we roll 1d6, a four modified to an eight, and the boxers fail to cause any harm. Now we have two commands, and we will attack the boxers, and we need a result higher than five, and we have a plus four because of our combat power, so we roll 1d6. The result is a three plus four is seven. The boxers are sent to the dispersed box, and now we will attempt to advance our army to Yang Sun. We need a seven or more, and there's a plus three, so we roll 1d6. And the result is a three plus three, six. We need it higher than six, so uh, there is no effect, and we suffer. Well, there is an effect. We suffer one loss because we're in a danger zone. So now we have to reduce. Uh, and we will reduce our strength to plus three. And we return the Chinese unit to the cup. That's the end of the turn. Only five cards left. Next card. Allies take Taku Forts. 
17th of June 1900, Allied forces use maneuver and superior firepower to besiege and then capture the Taku forts that surround and guard the key city of Sien We have a special activity, Imperial Artillery reduces our fortification level by one, but we don't have any fortification level, so that is ignored. Presently, we have boxer forces in all directions, so no new forces uh, arrive in the legation map. We have three actions. With three actions, we have to eliminate those two boxer units, or the game will be over right now. And uh, the good thing is that each one of them have a strength of one. So we will attack first with the British and French uh, against the southern boxers. So we roll 1d6. And the result is a six. The boxers are eliminated. And uh, we could now, uh, well, our forces are going to be definitely eliminated because our casualties would be six plus the boxer and street fighting box effects. That is eight minus one because the uh, uh, boxer unit was at strength one. So uh, that would be seven. So our forces would be eliminated because we rolled a five we can subtract two more, but that would go down now to uh, five. And we have the option of using the uh, keep up the fire marker for a reroll. And let's imagine we rerolled and we rolled a one. The boxers would be eliminated, but our casualties would be one because of the die roll, one because of the boxer unit, and one because of the street fighting uh, uh, box. That would be three minus one because the Boxer unit had a strength of one. That is still two. So our units would be eliminated with any die roll at all. So we will not burn that keep up the fire counter. And the British and the French are now reduced to zero. And their units are eliminated. Now our second action, and the result is going to be practically the same. The boxers have a strength of one as well as each of our units. So we roll 1d6 for casualties. The result is a two and the boxer casualties are increased by two to four and the boxer unit is eliminated. And our casualties start at two plus the boxer unit three plus street fighting box four. And because the boxer unit had a strength of one, uh, that is reduced to three. So we have three casualty points. But the Americans and Italians combined have a strength of two, so both units are eliminated and are removed from the map. Now there's only the Japanese left. And we have one action left. And the Japanese uh, firing on the king unit, even though if they score a hit, will not be able to roll greater than the strength of six. So we will use our last point for fortification. And now both king units advance. And they advance on the eastern and western walls. There is no legation movement. We can't move the Japanese. They're engaged. And we go now to the relief column phase. And a special activity at conduct a Chinese blockading force attack. So we pick a Chinese unit and it is the five strength mixed unit to conduct a uh, blocking attack. So we roll 1d6 and add plus three. Five plus three is eight. It is not lower than its strength, so the attack fails. And we have to attack this Chinese unit. It's a matter of just decency at this, time, at this level. So we uh, roll 1d6. A three plus our modifier of plus three is six, so we disperse the Chinese, and now we have to roll to advance into Yang Sun. And we roll 1d6 with a plus 3. And we roll the 1 plus 3, 4. That is a failure, and we suffer one loss, which we'll deduct from our strength. And now our strength is down to 2. Housekeeping, and that's the end of the turn. Next card, a special card. Rail and telegraph lines cut. 
The Boxers destroyed railway and telegraph lines as a strategic maneuver to halt enemy soldiers from moving. Imperial edicts were posted which called for attacks against the invading foreign forces marching to Peking. And we resolved this one immediately and reduced the eight nation army's speed by one box. So now our speed is actually plus two. Next card, Paysong Falls. 5th of August, 1900s, the Americans led as the city of Paysang Falls to a contingent of 2,500 men from the United States 9th and 14th Infantry, 5th Artillery, and a U.S. Marine Battalion. A special activity, student interpreters form civilian volunteers and we gain one combat point to any legation unit. So we'll bring back the Italians, and they have now a strength of one. And we'll throw them to the thick of battle here, on the west side. There are currently Chinese forces on the west and east track, so we place two boxer units with strengths of five on the north and south track. And we have four actions, and things are really, really bad. The Japanese engage in melee with the king unit on the east wall. We roll 1d6 for casualties. The roll is a 2, so king casualties are 2, and uh, we reduce their strength now to 4. Our casualties are 2, and we subtract the wall modifier, minus 1, it's 1, and all we need is 1 for the Japanese to be eliminated, so they are gone. Now the Italians engage in melee against the king units on the west wall. We roll 1d6 for casualties. The roll is a 3. King casualties are now reduced by 3, and they are now at level 3. And our casualties uh, would be 3, uh, but because the king unit is in a wall, it is minus 2, so it is 1. We have one level of fortification, so we use it now. And uh, the Italians survive for another day. Now to the Chinese advance phase. The boxers in the north and south track advance into long range and the king units on the west and east walls advance onto the street fighting spaces. As to legation movement, the Italians are uh, engaged with the king units on the uh, west street fighting space, so there is no legation movement. And uh, relief column phase, we have two commands and we have to remove the uh, four strength boxer unit. So we take it out of the cup. We pick a Chinese unit from the cup and it is the King Army unit with a strength of seven. Uh, we attempt to attack it. So we roll 1d6, we roll a 1 modified to a 3, and that is um, a loss, and we suffer double loss because we're in a uh, danger zone. So we reduce our strength by two boxes and speed also by two boxes. Housekeeping and to the next card. And this is just the agony of the defeat here. Allied assault on the legation compound. 13th of August 1900, a series of uncoordinated attacks and poor leadership stymie attempts by the Allied forces to break the siege of Peking. We have a special activity and boxer units will advance two spaces this turn and there are Chinese units from all directions so no units will come in. We have four actions. And the only action we can undertake is really with the Italians. They will attack the king units in the street fighting box. A six was rolled. The casualties for the king are six plus one for the uh, street fighting box. That is seven. And that eliminates them because they only had a strength of two. And of course, that die roll also eliminates the Italians, even if we use our card that reduces losses by two. So there's uh, nobody else to defend the uh legation compound. And we only had two cards left and uh, our eight nation army 
uh, never made it past uh, Pei Song here. So uh, they were not even close to getting to Peking. And with the elimination of the Italians, the game is over and we have suffered a substantive defeat. If there's any consolation here is that uh, it could have been worse if the Chinese units had advanced into Fort Holiday, it would have been a decisive defeat. But a defeat is a defeat, any way you put it, and that is the end of the game. This is a really tough game and a very tense one because uh, you have critical situations in, in both places in the legation. You see your forces dwindling with every turn. And meanwhile, the relief column cannot be uh, trying to advance at its whim because it will suffer uh, uh, casualties if, uh, if you try to advance it with uh, very uh, small die roll modifiers. So, uh, it is really a uh, excruciating uh, experience for the for the uh, for the player when you see your people at Peking just being decimated. Now I had a really good time with the game. I'm looking forward to playing it again, and I hope that this video has given you a good idea of how the game plays and what the game has to offer. So this is Tuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.